Hey there, chemists. In this lesson, we're going to look at some more ways that we calculate the free energy, the delta G of a process, uh, both under standard conditions and also some non-standard conditions. Recall from the last lesson, we had an expression that says delta G is the change in enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. And we spent a lot of time looking at those reference values that are under standard conditions. So we use this superscript zero to denote standard state, standard conditions. Uh, there is a second equation, which I'm not going to derive, called the Arrhenius relationship that says the standard value for delta G is negative R times the temperature times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. So, and those are both for standard conditions. We're going to use those today and finally see how uh, the equilibrium constant changes with temperature. But we're also going to look at non-standard conditions. Non-standard conditions are delta G without that superscript zero, and they're calculated by using the standard value, the delta G standard uh, plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. And you could say, well, what's true at equilibrium? Remember, at equilibrium, we said this in the previous lesson, delta G is zero, and that's when Q is equal to K. So this newest equation actually becomes the one we just wrote over here for an equilibrium position. So let's look at an example of this and see how we can calculate a non-standard condition and where it's going in terms of being thermodynamically favorable or not. So here we have a reaction. I'm just going to rewrite the reaction for a second of carbon monoxide plus two equivalents of hydrogen is in equilibrium with a methanol, CH3OH. And remember, the activity of a pure liquid or solid is one. So if we were to write the reaction quotient, which is the same as the expression for the equilibrium, it's just the gases on the reactant side, which go in the denominator. So Q is equal to products over reactants. The product is a liquid, so its activity is one. And in the denominator, we're going to use the, the partial pressures. We have three atmospheres of hydrogen, and we have five atmospheres of carbon monoxide. So the expression would be the partial pressure of CO times the partial pressure of H2. Don't forget to square it because of its coefficient of 2. Uh, and then if we actually just plug those numbers in, we get 1 over 5 times 3 squared. Uh, which, if we write as a decimal, is about 0 0.022. So then, to get our uh, delta G, we actually first need the standard delta G value, because that's in the equation. Go back to that chart at the end of your workbook, find the values that you need. I'll go ahead and plug them in. It's negative 166. 0.6 kilojoule per mole for the methanol, minus negative 137.2 kilojoules for the carbon monoxide. You don't even have to look up the value for hydrogen, because remember, elements in their standard state have a zero value. This turns out to be negative 29.4 kilojoules. That's our standard. And now we're going to get our non-standard, which is delta G is equal to delta G standard plus R times T times the natural log of the quotient. So we can plug in the value up above. Remember, a lot of these times with thermodynamic data, we have a value of 8.314 in joule per mole Kelvin for R, but a delta G that's in kilojoules. So make one compatible with the other. Either way works. I'll multiply this number by 1,000. Uh, so I get negative 29,400 joule per one of those reactions, times R is 8.314. The temperature is 298 Kelvin. And then the natural log of uh, what we just found out, 0.022. The natural log of 0.022. Doing all that math in your calculator, you get negative 38,856 joules 
which we'll just round and divide by 1,000, we get negative 39 kilojoules. And the most common notation you'll see is per mole of reaction, meaning per one of those reductions of carbon monoxide as written. So very spontaneous, very thermodynamically favorable. Not necessarily fast, but very much going in the forward direction at that temperature under those conditions. That makes sense. We've got high pressure of both reactants, and they are going to react and go forward. So it already looks good. So practice using this. Uh, here's a different reaction. Now we have the synthesis of ammonia. They went ahead and gave you the standard delta G value. Uh, practice using this new equation for both of these two states and get the non-standard delta G for parts A and B right there. So go ahead and hit pause and go ahead and see what you get for parts A and B using those values. Okay, so plugging in our values from up above, we have an, uh, a standard delta G of negative 33,300 in joules, plus R is 8.314. This is still 25 Celsius, so 298 Kelvin. I'm gonna put the reaction quotient right in the equation. We get the natural log of a fairly big expression Looking at the reaction, we have ammonia squared divided by nitrogen times hydrogen cubed. And if I just plug in the numbers that are given, that is 1.00 squared divided by 1.47, plugging in the partial pressures, times 0.01 cubed. And when you look at the terms, you get negative 33,300 for the standard, plus it's 33,274. And if we were to follow our sig fig rules for this, I actually get about zero. This is about zero, which means this is an equilibrium position. We happen to be at equilibrium, just because 274 or not even uh, compared with 300 is really small. If you wrote down 26 joules, you're not wrong, but 26 joules is very, very small in the scales that we're looking at here. So I'd round and call it zero, a state of equilibrium. For part B, delta G is the same expression, same standard conditions, negative 33,300, plus it's R times T times the natural log of, well, part B, everything is one. So the reaction quotient is just one. And remember the natural log of one is zero. So this whole second term gets canceled and delta G is just delta G standard, negative 33.3 uh, kilojoules per molar reaction, which this is the standard state. So we didn't even have to write that out if we didn't want to. Remember, standard conditions refers to, it's up at the top here, uh, one atmosphere for your gases and one molar for your aqueous species. That also tells us the reaction is running forward because it's negative delta G reaction is running forward. Okay, so just to wrap up this unit, um, we're going to look at how the equilibrium constant varies with temperature. Ever since we introduced the equilibrium constant, we've said it only changes with how you write the reaction and with temperature, and we can finally see why if we do a short derivation that combines the two delta G expressions we have from today. Delta G standard is negative RT, natural log of the equilibrium constant, and it's also delta H standard minus T, delta S standard. So we can isolate the equilibrium constant, or rather the natural log of the equilibrium constant, and it becomes the negative of the change in enthalpy divided by R times the inverse temperature plus the change in entropy divided by R. And this is an Arrhenius relationship that shows a logarithmic versus inverse temperature function, which is not new to us. We've seen these kinds of relationships before with not equilibrium constants, but with rate constants and with uh, vapor pressures as well. So if we graph this with a slope that tells us the change in enthalpy of a process. And we're gonna do a lab that uses this and studies how the equilibrium constant varies with temperature. 
You could actually rearrange this expression if you wanted to for two different equilibrium constants, the natural log of k1 over k2 is equal to negative change in enthalpy over r times the difference in the inverse temperatures, 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. That's a useful expression that gets rid of the, the change in entropy. So both of these expressions work. And when I write it like that, it's just similar to other Arrhenius relationships. So similar to other what we call Arrhenius equations, namely uh, the natural log of the ratio of the rate constants, lowercase k, 1 and 2, is equal to, this is where we have the activation energy, negative Ea over R times the difference in the inverse absolute temperatures, 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. We have the same exact uh, equation if we replace these lowercase k's with vapor pressures, P1 over P2. And then same thing here, but then instead of activation energy, this becomes a delta H. I'm not even going to write that out, but you have that back on the gases unit. So this is how uh, temperature affects the equilibrium constant, actually quantitatively. And then the rest of this shows how we get the value of the free energy under non-standard conditions.